Hello, hello, everyone. Amanda Grace here with you today. My, my, it's already been a monumental day, and we're going to get into that in just a moment. Welcome to everybody watching and jumping on the United States and around the world. And hello to our moderators and Ark of Grace team. Thank you for helping us do what we do for the Lord. I'm going to open up in prayer. And then I've got one thing for you to mark your, your calendars for here, a teaching tomorrow night that I'm going to briefly talk about. And we're going to bring in Andrew Sorcini to talk about this monumental ruling with the Supreme Court, how it affects uh, the markets, as well as there's some other things that occurred uh, in the past couple of weeks that are super important to keep track of. So let's open up in prayer. And then we'll get right into it. Father God, in the precious name of your son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua, we come before you. We praise you. You are almighty God. You are high and lifted up far above every power, principality, and might. Father, we ask you to forgive us of our sins, cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Lord, we humble ourselves before you this day, asking that the pull of the flesh becomes less in our lives, so you, your will, and your power become more in our lives. We acknowledge you sent your son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua Mashiach, to the earth, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. He was the Passover lamb, the sacrifice for our sins. He willingly died at Calvary. He purchased us and redeemed us by the shedding of his own blood, he made an open show and spectacle of the enemy before all of creation that day at Calvary. He rose again in three days as was prophesied and after appearing to many ascended back into heaven, victoriously taking his righteous place at the right hand of the Father where he rules and reigns forevermore. And we honor that before you this day. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we invite your presence, the presence of Ruach Elohim, the spirit of the living God and the presence of the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit to fill this place, Lord, that your power would go before us, Lord, that you would lead and guide us in all wisdom, counsel, might, power, and the reverent to fear of the Lord. Fill us with wisdom, Lord. Teach us to be good stewards, Father, according to your word, Lord. Lead and guide us and navigate us through these matters, Father God, in the earth, Lord, so we can be not only victorious for you, but that we can be a blessing to others, Father. Lord, take all the glory for yourself. You are the potter. We are most certainly just the clay. Without, the, without your breath of life in us, we are simply the dust of the earth, Lord. And Father, you are the author and finisher of our faith. We acknowledge that this day. Let your name be glorified above all, Father. And as always, we pray by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, by the spirit of the one true living God. May only the truth and power of Almighty God with authority now come forth in Jesus' name, Father. Amen and amen. Amen. Okay. Praise the Lord. So, tomorrow night, mark your calendars because we are doing part three of the eclipse and this nation. You want to see this because there is so much. There is so much there. I think I have about 15 pages worth of material right now that I'm sure my team is going to love to receive and have to get ready. But it, it is fascinating. And we're going to go over all of it tomorrow night. So mark your calendars for that. It's going to be 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm also going to be on Elijah Streams at 2 p.m. tomorrow. Uh, so I'll be on 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Elijah Streams, 5 p.m. here at Ark of Grace, Eastern Standard Time for the Eclipse Part 3 and the Nation. Now, let's bring Andrew in because a lot has happened. Oh, yes. And something monumental happened today. Hello, Andrew. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, good. It's been a busy day news-wise for sure. It has. Uh, Supreme Court came down back with a 9 to zero decision that Trump cannot be taken off the ballot in states. Yeah. So that was pretty, that was a monumental decision for it to go 9 0. Uh, so it's amazing what's happening. Oh, yes. It looks like he's going to be back. It's, um, um, it's really, really, really looking good. We've still got a little bit of time and a lot of yeah. work to do. But it's um, even once he is in, we've had um, four or almost three and a half years of um of um undoing everything that trump did in the four years that he was in mm -hmm. and we're gonna have to they're gonna have to work hard to get things back on track so how do you think this decision andrew and i think we have a news article to show for it because it's incredible that the liberal judges on the panel broke with the conservative judges but they did and i think they saw the writing on the wall that if they didn't rule this correctly that uh states were going to start ripping biden off the ballot 
left and right. So I think maybe they saw the writing on the wall with this. But how does this affect, Andrew, when a monumental decision like this comes down? How does it affect the markets? Well, I mean, today I, I saw the stock market. Many of the stocks were up big, up mm -hmm. huge. The um, Bitcoin shot up about to about $67 an ounce. Today, gold closed at an all-time high. Wow. Yeah, $2,115.90 an ounce, which is just amazing. Really, gold should be so much higher. And silver's not doing bad either. It's just under $24 an ounce. So mm -hmm. a big day in the financial markets. And okay, so something else too is going on, Andrew, that I know you wanted to talk about that's happened in the past couple of weeks that people should be aware of. Yeah, yeah, th this is huge. So so for anybody that does watch the markets a lot, like I do, you've yeah. seen that January and February have been really big for, for um, technology stocks. We've seen yes. the, the S&P 500, we've seen the Dow, we've seen, um, we've seen uh, NASDAQ hit all-time highs. It's just unbelievable because we know that things, the economy actually isn't that great, but these stocks are being driven by the magnificent seven stocks, which include um, Facebook. Well, actually it's Meta that owns Facebook, Alphabet that owns Google and um, Tesla and okay. Amazon. And there's three others as well. Those seven stocks, if you take them out of the stock market, yeah. look at everything else, then it's not doing so well. But really- okay. If you pull up the article from the Business Insider, this one's huge. So the great cash out. Yes. Yes. Now, that particular article shows that since um, in the last 10 days or so, people like um, Jeff Bezos and Jamie Dimon and Mark Zuckerberg and the Walton family have sold a combined $11 billion worth of their own company stock. And of course, it's their right to do so. But it's an interesting time because the stock market's been so high. Like, why, why would you sell at the yeah. high when you know it's probably going to go higher unless you had somewhere better to put it? And um, I don't think it's going into Bitcoin like some people speculate, because if it was going into Bitcoin, then these people could just use cash reserves and make that investment through their company, yeah. just like Elon Musk did a couple of years ago through Tesla. He just let everybody know this is what I'm doing. I've bought a, a whole lot of Bitcoin and I'm going to hold on to it on the Tesla ledger. You wouldn't need to actually sell the stock and pay tax on it. So I believe that this is going into gold. OK, so this article came out on Monday and um, they must have sold, I'm guessing, Thursday and Friday of the previous week, not last week, but the week before. So if the article came out on Monday, the first version of it, where it showed that they sold nine, $9 billion worth, now it's up to $11 billion, it's probably going into gold. That coincides with gold jumping just in the last two days, about $70 an ounce. Mm -hmm. So I think we're, we're going to finally see gold go on the run that it's due. Don't you find it interesting, too, that 10 days before this Supreme Court ruling comes down, that very much influences the election in a positive way, because honestly, you should not be ripping people off ballots for, for no reason, except, you know, to, to politically hunt them as prey. But don't you find it interesting that they all sold before oh, yeah. all of this begins to happen? There are no coincidences. They, they, this is actually something that, that they knew. See, they're like the casinos. The casino always wins. And these people control the markets yeah. and, and they know what they're doing better than anyone out there. Mm -hmm. So so it does look like um, that they knew. And they sold leading up to Super Tuesday. Oh, yeah. That, that's another thing. We are on the cusp of Super Tuesday, which actually is tomorrow. Mm hmm. So, so from an investor's standpoint, okay, if you've, if yeah. you're, your options are, when I say gold, I mean precious metals. So, yeah. so um, if you're looking at I gold, have it here, you want me to show it? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. This is the non reportable silver. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. That's a Franklin half dollar. In yes, a, there's a Franklin. Okay. I know I have the Liberty Bell upside down. And then I have the gold that you talked about, right? Which oh, is yeah. the older. Yep, that's a twenty dollars St. Gaudens. That's yes. an amazing condition. Um, back, yeah, that I one, have it in plastic. Yeah, it's dated in the early nineteen hundreds. Mm -hmm. Back then, a man could take that, and you could go buy a really nice suit for it. And 
And um, here's how well gold has held its value. Today, you can take you can take that coin and it'll still buy you a very nice suit. It's um, it's held its value and it actually gets you a, probably a better one than you need. So, yeah. it's, um, it, but it's a it's the best store of value that I can think of. So knowing that tomorrow's Super Tuesday and mm -hmm. knowing that um, we're going to have a wild ride from now until the election, if I could you can own say stocks, that, yes, if I could own stocks, gold like what you have in your hand or Bitcoin. Yes. I want to have the tangible asset because I can't hold the stocks in my hand. Um, I can hold the gold oh, in my they're hand. They're slippery. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. I want those, mm -hmm. not not stocks and not Bitcoin right now. I think that um, if when Trump gets elected and mm -hmm. you start to feel a little bit more comfortable about things, it's still not going to be fixed in one day. It's going to take a long time. I think there'll be at least two years minimum where you're going to want to hold on to your physical gold and silver minimum until we can see what direction we're truly headed. You know, stocks can be very volatile, especially in an election year. So you have some stocks that are much higher risk than others. And they, and especially in an election year, they can become very volatile given what's happening during yeah. the course of the primaries leading up then to the nominations and then leading up to the election. Uh, and so stocks tend, stocks tend to be a little more on the fritz uh, when we see these things happening, not to mention you, you see wars going on in Ukraine and you see wars going on, you know, in Israel right now. And you see these things going on around the world, which tend to affect markets as well. So, yes, I think what Andrew is saying, I agree with that. You should have something else there to hold up when you have stocks. You can't put all your eggs in one basket, financially speaking. You need to hedge and protect what you have. Absolutely. So, so um, along those lines, let's say that you did invest into physical gold and silver, and let's say that the stock market keeps going up after you did that, and your gold and silver is maybe not doing as good as the stocks that you have. When those tides turn, and they always do, yeah, the stocks won't be doing so good, and then the gold and silver will, t will take off. Right now, we're in a rare situation where everything's going up, and I do think that it's because of the Supreme Court ruling today. I think that it's because of the articles that we just talked about with the billionaires um, selling their stock in their own companies, some yes. for the first time ever, with no apparent direction as to where those funds went. So the, I know that's strange. Yeah. Yeah. To it, sell that much. OK, we're not talking about a thousand dollars here. We're talking about billions and you don't know where they took it and put it. Exactly. When Elon Musk sells um, sells shares of Tesla, oftentimes he will say that it's to fund um, um, rockets that he's doing with one of his other companies. Yeah. He they have to when he sells it, he says where it's going. Well, they're not saying anything, and they're not required to. And that's why owning physical gold and silver to me is is such a great thing because it's um it's uh, our business and only our business. In fact, um, um Clay Clark plays this video all the time with this guy named. Uh, Augustine Karstens, who's uh -huh. um, the head of the um, International Bank of Settlements. Okay. And he just comes right out and he says, um, when a person has a hundred dollar bill, okay, you don't know what they're doing with it. You don't know what they're buying with it, who they're giving it to. And it, it's laughable because it's, we know that they've, that the, that the government through the banks have been tracking what we do with our dollars for years and years and years. But to hear the um, the head of the International Bank of Settlements come out and just outright say it, we we basically only want you to have a currency that we could see where that money's going, where it came from, and what you're doing with it. And really, why would they do that? It's so that they can either approve it or not approve it. And um, the days of owning assets like what you just had in your hands um, outside of the centralized banking system yeah. are almost done. So. That's why gold's up. You know, it's interesting, too, because, you know, of course, this our stock market, New York Stock Exchange, right? It's in New York City on Wall Street. And you have major investors in New York threatening to pull out of New York yeah. because of the um, ruling that had to do with the 454 million, right? That they've tried to hit Trump with. And you have major investors that have billions in the city threatening to pull out. 
You've got trucking companies saying we're not delivering. And you've got Governor Hostel trying to pull a Trudeau saying, well, we'll freeze your assets if you don't deliver, which they can't do. And I think more and more with the Supreme Court ruling is beginning to put the squeeze on them. And the, and the stock market knows it in a way. The stock market knows that this squeeze has started. Yeah, absolutely. One of, one of the people, um, one of my sales associates here is a, a former Wall Street trader that also lives, he lives in, um, in the Hamptons. Okay. And we allow for him to work remotely. And, and I asked him, I go, what, what do you think of, of everything that you just stated with one thing added is that um, in addition to everything that you said about New York businesses, people that want to start new businesses, there's no way they're going to start them in New York. Especially when no, uh, not now. You have scared yeah. them off. They have run yeah. and dove behind a bush, and you ain't going to see them like yeah. a white-tailed deer taken off. They're done. Yeah, he says I live in New York, but uh, I, I don't. It wouldn't make sense to, for anybody that doesn't live here to come here while all no. this is happening. Nor would you start a business there. He goes, you're far better off going to Texas or Miami. And I think it's even better than California. Like we're we're so much like New York in some in yes. some ways, and it's um. Well, it's a it's a sad day, but I'm glad that people are standing up for what they believe in. Well, well, they are. And, you know, similar territorial spirits in California and in New York, uh, similar atmosphere. I've lived here all my life and uh, the Lord has me positioned here until further notice. So, <laughs> so I'm here right now. Hello, we're positioned here. But it is interesting to watch the panic begin in Albany right now, which is our capital, the panic that's beginning over some of this. It re it's really interesting because you're going to see them get more and more erratic. Their language, their rhetoric, you're going to see it get more and more erratic as we go along. Watch after Super Tuesday, right? The media and the governors and the DAs and the attorney generals just lose their stuff. Just watch this epic meltdown happen. I'm telling you, it's coming. Yep, tomorrow's going to be a big day. <laughs> we'll we'll see. I again, I I don't want to I don't want to have a whole lot of stocks while all this is is yes. um, lingering. Um, love my gold and silver. It helps me sleep at night. I'm not necessarily trying to make money with my gold and silver. It's more like um, an insurance policy against everything that I've worked my whole life for. Yes, yes, and you know, uh, in in scripture. Abraham, it's noted in scripture, Abraham had gold and silver. David had it. Solomon had it. There are many in scripture that actually it is recorded yep. that they had it um, and that at times they utilized it. Uh, so that's interesting in itself to point out. But, I, you know, like I said, I think it's good to have diversity when it comes to your finances. In fact, my father-in-law over the weekend was asking me about bonds to help him translate how much he'd make. He goes, do you remember back in your finance days? I said, oh yeah, I remember. So he showed me the piece of paper and I went over that with him uh, as well, because people are looking right now, you know, at different avenues, including gold and silver to hedge and to diversify. And I think they really should right now, given, um, I'm going to tell you this, after that eclipse happens in April and we hit Passover and we get off running till November, yes, I think it is a good idea uh, to hedge and protect what you've been given. Absolutely. It really is. It's um, So you talk about bonds and that's something before this uh, billionaire story came out, that's yeah. all we were talking about is bonds. Mm -hmm. you know, like, we always say that the that the dollar is not backed by anything tangible, but it has been credit backed for decades and, and it has been uh, U.S. Treasury bonds and other countries out there for years have been investing in U.S. Treasury bonds because it's a very safe bet for them. They always can make money on them. Mm -hmm. Well, with the dollar getting very close to, to um, losing its its reserve world reserve currency status, then those bonds are going to start to be worth less and less and less. No one's going to want them and they're going to yeah. have to sell them. And we're going to be the ones that have to buy them back. And um, that's going to be not just the end of the dollar as the world's reserve currency, but it will signal the beginning of the end for all fiat currency. Yeah, Fiat currency is currency that is uh, not backed by anything real. 
printed mm -hmm. out of thin air. It's just an agreement between all of us that there's value here, but really there's not any value. Yeah. So I think what they're going to do is tank all of these currencies and then come in and save the day like they always do with this central bank digital currency. And we're going to be telling them, thank you. Thank you so much for, uh, um, <laughs> for this. And when you own gold, physical gold, you're, you're in on the ground floor on this. Yeah. This is probably going to happen no matter what. It just won't happen overnight. It's going to take probably a decade. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting in Germany, right? During the time of Nazi Germany, inflation got so bad that they were using their currency for wallpaper. <laughs> it was worth nothing. And they were using it literally for wallpaper because it was worthless. People had tons of it and it was worthless. Wow. Wow. Yep. Um, I heard somebody recently, um, they were just having fun talking about like, a, if you've ever taken kids to Chuck E. Cheese, you go, <laughs> you go to Chuck E. Cheese and you give a, a wad of cash and they give you these tokens. And yes. You tell the kids, okay, go ahead, go play the games, do whatever you want. And then you get the tickets that, that you agree yes. that those tickets have value. And when, when you walk out of Chuck E. Cheese, those tickets have no value at all. No, you but can't use them there, anywhere. Yeah, you can you can buy all these. You could try. <laughs> exactly. But it's like that's no different than than um, our currency here. Yeah. Is that um, is that within w within the boundaries of the United States and, and even somewhat outside of the the, the dollars have value. But oh, the, this is interesting, Andrew. Here, I'm going to put this comment up. Purple damselfly. It happened in Venezuela. They were using their to line their bird cages. They were using their currency to line their bird cages. I think Venezuela at one point, and we have we have the exact numbers on our website somewhere. But Venezuela had one of the most crazy like um, um, inflation, like bouts yeah. with inflation that anybody's ever seen, and Zimbabwe too. Yeah. Like, oh my! Do you, I get sent Zimbabwe currency? Yeah, trillion dollar notes. People, people <laughs> yeah. send it. It's it, it, it's it's interesting. It's interesting to see it, you know. Uh, yeah. But yeah, Zimbabwe, the Iraqi dinar. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and you know, people all the time ask us, and this is great that you mentioned this because uh -huh. um, so many people ask us if we think that that's a good investment. And um, for me, I think that any investment, it doesn't matter if it's a stock, gold or silver. It's priced at what it's worth, and yes. um, and I, I wouldn't advise on getting involved with the Iraqi uh, dinar. I think it's gambling. You're you're trying to to make a lot of money off of something that is relatively cheap. I think it's a long shot. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, when it has to do with um with funds that we might use for retirement or to live off of, that uh, you should probably look for a more stable investment. Well, yes, yes, you want stable investments. You do. Um, I know people that like to, 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 you know, toy in derivatives and futures and things of that nature, but that really is gambling. Yeah. I mean, it, it, that is gambling um, and it is an art to be able to deal in those things. So you definitely want some more stable items. Yeah, let me tell you something. When I was 21 and I worked at that hedge fund company and I was on one of their largest funds worth hundreds of millions of dollars, they had, Right. A lot. Uh, they they had um, gold and silver currency in their portfolio. I saw it. They had it. Yeah, they had commodities too and bonds and other things. But that was there also. They had it as a part of it. Um, so you know, if they do it right to hedge what they have, and these are enormous funds, well, then we should do follow suit and hedge what we have also and protect it. That's using wisdom. Absolutely. It's, um, yeah. there's so many people that, uh, that contact us. They have, um, investment advisors at say JP Morgan Chase and, uh, and we get them excited about the idea of adding gold and silver to their portfolio, but then they check with their financial advisor at JP Morgan Chase and they say, stay away from physical gold and silver. Of course, um, we can we can get you involved in ETFs where you can invest in gold and silver going up or down. And um, and it's funny because J.P. Morgan Chase has the largest hoard of physical silver of anyone out there. They have over 600 million ounces. So so they're doing one thing and telling you to do another, another because it doesn't benefit them. 
And that's the only reason why. Exactly. So get your questions ready because I, I'm going to put them up for Andrew in a moment. So if you have questions for Andrew, he answers them real time. And we've gotten some interesting questions in the past uh, few weeks, past month that Andrew has been on. So if you have questions, put them in the chat and I will put them up as Andrew and I are talking. Uh, so I'm watching Andrew to see who is going to put up questions here in the chat. Oh, we have to give them a moment now to think about their questions and what they want to ask you. But um, maybe explain to Andrew the process. We'll put up your website. Explain the process again of buying this with your company. Yeah, it's um, sometimes people do reach out to me and they say, you know, could you um, be a little bit more clear about um, how the process works? And I, and I always tell them, yes, I will. So um, let's take a moment to do that. When, when you fill out the online form on bh-pm.com, put in as much information on the form as you possibly can. There is a, a sign up form for a free consultation right on the homepage. Yes. Say Ark of Grace sent you. But in the notes section, put in really specific things if you can. Like um, let's say that uh, you just sold a property and now you're sitting on a, a good amount of cash and having that cash in the yeah. bank. Um, making you nervous and you want to explore your options with gold or silver, put that in there because it'll actually help me direct you to um, the experts here at, at my company that can help you the best. So if it's a, if you have a 401k and you want to know if your 401k is eligible to be able to, um, to have own real gold and silver and be rolled over into a precious metals IRA, then, uh, then put that in there and we can help you. And, um, Go ahead. Okay. Rhonda Vale is asking, is gold available in a 401k? It is. And and um, so if you still work at the firm where the 401k was generated at, there is a chance that they won't let you. So you should check with human resources and say that um, I would like to know if I can roll some of this out of the 401k into a precious metals IRA with a different company and, um, and just listen to their answer because most of the time it's a no. But sometimes they'll let you do like 20 or 30 percent of it. So it's worth checking out for sure. OK, Linda is asking, where's the safest place to put my money, T-bills or money market accounts or where? Well, I think as far as safe um, money market would be great. Um, a CD would be great. Um, I would stay away from the T-bills right now because that's what's propping up the dollar. And I feel like the dollar's outlook is not good. And it's not just the dollar here. It's all of the yeah. currency out there. But um, really gold right now, and I'm not speaking of of making money with your investment. It's more of preserving what you have. But gold is super safe right now. It, you know, I was on another interview with somebody that has a lot of experience um, in investing, as you do. Mm -hmm. And um, he asked a really interesting question. He sometimes with your investments, you can look at them and go, okay, this um, this stock, Apple stock, um, I bought it say four years ago, hypothetically. Would I buy that again today at the new price that it's at now? Mm, Most of the time, people are going to say no because it's yes. up so much. You don't want to own it at the at the current prices. But with gold, if you didn't buy gold when it was nineteen hundred dollars or two thousand dollars an ounce, now it sits at um, it sits at uh, twenty one hundred and sixteen dollars an ounce. So if you missed it at nineteen hundred and you're looking at it, would I invest in it at today's prices? For me, I absolutely would. Because I think it'll go much higher. I think it should be twenty-three to twenty-five hundred dollars at some point within the next couple of years. Ida is asking: Is your starting purchase still at two thousand? It is. Um, if um, so, for Ida, if you've spoken with us a couple of times and you've not been able to to meet that, what we've been able to do is is uh, is tell people to try to go in with neighbors or friends or other family members to meet the minimum. And, yeah. that's, and that's managed to work out um, quite good. Okay. Marilyn is asking, what if you have not a penny to invest? What should people do that don't have money to invest? Um, what I would do is um, whatever cash that you do have, I would keep it where you can get to it in an emergency. Um, we talk a lot about the dollar becoming worthless and other fiat currencies being uh, becoming worthless, but you're still going to need something to transact with. Yeah. For you, gold and silver might not be a good option. So 
but have your cash close to you if it's safe to do so. GD Downs is asking, how can you buy gas at the pump or groceries with a gold coin? We would have to be in a, a true emergency situation in order yeah. for that to happen. And we're not really there yet, but we've seen um, short-term emergencies where like say during Katrina, people were transacting with gold and silver, buying mm -hmm. things like generators back then. That's true. Yes, yeah, so you just, you have an idea of what it's worth and you hope that whoever you're transacting with will be able to give you change in some sort of equal type of currency so that you could uh, so that you can go on and, and use that to make other purchases but it's not clear now but if it was an emergency it would be clear okay jackie is asking is it a good idea to own silver rounds instead of coins so um that's a question we get every single day okay um, oftentimes the coins cost more ounce per ounce than the silver rounds do and um so so we're taught from the time we're very young that if you could buy one ounce of silver here or, or one thing here and one thing there, if one is cheaper, that cheaper is better. But it isn't necessarily because with silver rounds, those are a reportable asset. So yeah. if, you're, um, if you go to sell those, it'll generate a 1099. Um, if you've already got some, say, you know, 50 or 100 ounces and you're thinking, well, geez, I don't want to have the reportable asset. Yeah. And maybe I should get rid of these and exchange these for um, for coins like the ones that Amanda held up earlier. Yeah. Well, if it's just a small amount like that, it can't hurt. But if yeah. you've invested thousands of dollars into silver and you've got the rounds, you really should consider getting the coins. They do cost more ounce per ounce because they have um, collector value. But that collector value is what makes it a non-reportable asset. So it's worth looking into and definitely reach out to us and we can try to explain it a little bit further. And, you know, for people that can't afford this right now, because we get a lot of those comments in the chat, what you do is, because when I could not afford to get any, I listened and I gained knowledge and wisdom because it was the Lord preparing me for when he did give it. So gain knowledge and wisdom and listen, and it helps you then when the Lord gives it to you to know how to steward over. So I always say it is still good to watch and gain knowledge and wisdom because you never know when the Lord is gonna put something into your life that you're gonna to have to steward financially. Uh, and then you have you have gained the wisdom in this area to know what to do. Absolutely. That's what I tell many people, Andrew, who watch because I used to watch and, and learn you know, when I didn't, you know, have hardly anything and I was really sick and I was having a very hard time in my life. That's what I would do. I would watch and I would learn. Okay. Let's see what this says. Linda said, asked, could a person give gold or silver sent to another person directly from you as a gift? Good question. Yeah, you can. And it's, um, you know, if I was, um, an agent at the IRS, they would probably give you a different answer. You know, I, think, I, think, um, I think technically, I think technically anything that's given to you, you know, does have to be reported, but it's, um, that's what people have been doing with gold and silver for generations. In fact, um, we have a storage option where you could have it stored at the depository, the same, the same depository where the bulk of our inventory is stored. Yeah. And um, it costs about a half a percent of the value of whatever you have stored there every year. So if you have, say, $100,000 worth of gold and silver there, it costs about $500 a year to store it there. And okay. that includes insurance. But the reason why I mentioned that is, is that um, you can set it up as a joint account with a beneficiary. beneficiary and should something happen to you, it then gets left to whoever the beneficiary is. And well, it's a, it's a great option. That is a good option. Jane Z is asking, she said, I've been buying silver coins and copper, also gold. Are coins better than bullion? They are because they're they're non-reportable. So for me, that makes them worth better. Copper is a great investment. It um, um, They have like copper rounds, but to me, the premium is so much higher than what it should be. It's just not feasible for us to be able to um, offer people copper at this time. But I, I think that copper right now is sort of like what silver was in the late 1960s. It's worth a little bit more than the face value of the coins that it's uh, uh, that yeah. made with. But um, I think it'll have its day. It just might be a while. 
Okay. Uh, Barbara is asking, what do we do with the coins we buy? Who buys from us? Oh, yeah. We'll buy anything out there that's gold or silver. So okay. if, um, even if you didn't get it from us. So um, we, we always do that. In fact, right now, you know, we see all these things that the economy is supposedly doing really great. The stock market's up big. We're seeing yeah. Bitcoin up big in 2024. And um, I'll tell you that more people are selling gold and silver in emergency situations than I've ever seen before. Yeah. But that's exactly why you have it. So, exactly. so um, in, like to that end, some of the other companies out there will make you hold gold and silver for six months before they let you sell it back to them. Wow. We don't do that. Yeah. You can sell to us anytime. Well, that's good to hear. You don't do that, Andrew. Yeah. See that that's a good service then that you have. Really? Um, Susie is saying, I buy junk silver. Those are coins that have been circulated use, and, and is usable for buying goods. Yes, that is right, Susie. Yep. And and the um the half dollars that Amanda's held up a couple of times, technically Please. that's cool. Yeah, the silver one, the Ben Franklin half dollar. Here he is. Hold on, let's put his it. edge straight. Yeah, there he is. junk silver. So what, okay. what used to happen is in the late sixties and early seventies, if um after a long day, if you get home, you empty out your pockets and um you, you see that you have a couple of silver coins in there, but silver wasn't really worth much back then. So you take the silver coins out, you throw them in a coffee can, and that was junk silver. It was silver that was um, no longer in circulation that much. Occasionally you could find some and um, you just save it. And one day these are going to be worth something. Well, today they're worth a whole lot more than what they were then. Mm -hmm. Ed and Debbie are saying, just want to thank you, uh, you to Andrew and his team for all the time he has given us about gold and silver. I um I, I think I know who they are, and um, for any for them and anyone else out there, um, we appreciate the support. I I like it. It's um people reach out to me all the time, send us very very nice texts. So I'm grateful to be in the position that I'm in. Cindy Hall says, my company just started an IRA. I was told since it was less than two years old, I cannot move it to a gold IRA. It says an S. Is that a SEP? What's it called? Is oh, that? Yeah. It might be a SEP IRA. A SEP IRA, yes. Yeah. Okay. So um, for Cindy, I would recommend that you fill out the online form mm -hmm. and put exactly that question in there. Um, yes. I will see it. I'll get you over to my IRA team and they'll, they'll check on that for you. I mean... It, the information you're getting might very well be right. It's, um, but it couldn't hurt to just take a couple moments here and, and let us help you find out. Amen. Okay, here we go. John is asking ratio, which should have more of 90% or 99% silver? Which should he have more of? For me, um, I think the 90% silver is the way to which go. Is this? Yes. And I'll explain why. That That's okay. a good question because um, we're taught that if you have 90% of something, that you don't have all of it. And when it, when yeah. you don't have all of it, it, it makes you feel yeah, like you don't it's true. something that's good. Well, with the 90% silver, let me explain one thing. And this is how you can have copper at the same time, okay? So that um, Franklin half dollar, okay? Yes. It's made of 90%, 90% of the yes. metal in that coin is silver, but there's, but 100%- A little bit of copper. There's 10% of copper in there. Yeah. So, so the value of that coin is based solely on the silver portion of it. So that 90% thing is a little tricky because 100% of the value of the coin is based on the silver content. So it's actually better than it sounds to me. I would rather have that. And you're getting the 10% in copper for free because it can't be extracted from the coin. One day copper could be worth something. And That's if true. it is, then you get to benefit. You have twice. it already. Yep. Sandy is asking, my mom, uh, who's 85, has about $14,000. Should we get bonds? Can she earn anything? Her monthly income is hardly anything. So she's probably on Social Security because she's 85 now. So what should she do, Andrew? I, mean, the, I would say that the most honest answer I could possibly give is for her. I don't mean for ev anybody with 14000 but for her, she should probably put that in a CD because the... the, um, the the interest rates are relatively high. I think I've seen some right now. Yep. They're yeah. over 5%, five percent, yeah. five and a half, five and a quarter. Yes. Yeah. And she's on such a fixed income. Like if she um, got gold and silver, she could uh, get a nice investment, but then she'd want to probably sell some of it. If there was an emergency, when you sell it in the short term, sometimes you have to sell it for a loss and that wouldn't be worth it for her. 
Susie is asking, Andrew, what are you hearing about Biden getting rid of the dollar and switching to crypto coins? Well, it's um, I do think that we're going that way because um, it goes back to the central bank digital currency, where when um, when United States put sanctions on Russia for Russia um, invading Ukraine, we put sanctions where we, we took the dollars that um, a lot of Russian officials and even Putin himself had um, had um, invested here in the United or had uh, deposited here in the U.S. Yeah. So uh, as a result, they've created um, the BRICS alliance, and the BRICS alliance is actually putting together a central bank digital currency that is gold backed right now, and and it's gaining a ton of traction. Right now, there's 11 countries that are in that union, with about 30 more uh, potentially getting in soon. So I do believe that the, that the dollars will be replaced by some form of a gold-backed central bank digital currency, but it won't happen overnight. It'll take years, and um, but I, I want to start preparing for it now. Amen. Illuminata Minani is asking, do you have to send $125 every year to maintain your precious metals IRA? Yes, and, um, and thank you. I, I have seen um, your name come through here. I know that you are a client. I appreciate your support, but yes, the um, the hundred twenty five dollars a year is the um, it's the it's the fee to uh, keep up all of the paperwork and the reporting that goes with your precious metals IRA. Okay, Nikki's asking, how do I convince my eighty eight year old mother that her money is not safe in the bank? My daddy died during COVID, and he was our town bank president. She thinks the bank is great. Oh yeah, that's um. You know, we we hear stories like that all the time. Yeah, it's um. So like, if you if you have money that's sitting in the bank, okay. Or can I see the question again? Oh yeah, sure. No. Here, there you go. Oh yeah. So like, um, what what um, a friend of mine, Bo Colney, always says, you don't have the key to the front door to the bank. So no, like, you don't. So um, even if you have it stored in say a safe deposit box, like you. You still have to stand in the same line that people are standing in if, if there's a bank run. And there's another bank that's it's actually a New York bank that's actually on the ropes right now. Very, very close to. to really? Gold. Yes. Let's see. It's called um, yeah, what New, was York, it? New York Community Bank Corp. Last week, Ooh. they replaced their um, they replaced their um, CEO and uh -huh. they lost like billions of dollars like already. So this. So bank, are people withdrawing from the bank. Yeah. So for, okay. for example, that bank will have a oh, bank. Oh, thank you. They found it. Yep. Yes. Here it is. That's New York right. Community Bank replaces CEO as loss mounts to 2.7 billion shares tumble. Exactly. So like the people that have accounts there, I promise you one thing that, that this morning, that probably an hour or two hours before it opened, they're standing out there um, in line waiting for the doors to open so that they could get cash and, and withdraw the funds out before they run out of cash and they will run out of cash because the banks only have like 2% cash for all of the money deposited. And it's not just that bank, it's all banks. So um, you want to protect yourself. You want to protect yourself. And if your money has to be in a bank, you want a bank that's pretty solid in their balance sheet. You know, that that's what you want. You, you want a bank that's solid and strong in their balance sheet. Uh, you know, if you have to keep money in a bank. So you have to be careful and do your due diligence with banks. Now, do I like the heads of many banks? No, I don't. <laughs> no, I don't. But you have to make sure their balance sheet is solid uh, in order to, to have a little more uh, security and keeping some of your money in a bank. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's like um, for me, um, because of the volume of business that we do here, um, I do have to have cash in the bank, but it makes me feel uncomfortable all the time. I try, yeah. I constantly trying to convert as much of it as I possibly can into gold and silver that is stored at the depository. That way I have it. They actually ship for us to our clients, which is um, yeah. the reason why we have the $2,000 minimum is that they won't handle the ones that are under that for us. Yes. Uh, JC is saying, uh, very recently, I got a letter from California that is taking thousands of dollars from me and my siblings that my aunt left us from JP Morgan and Chase. What can I do? No excuse. They stole it. Yeah, it's um, I would I would find an attorney. I've, I've seen yeah. so many stories. I have people send me stories like every day. And um, I've seen so many stories that are similar to that. I saw um, 
someone that um, that um, helped a family member that had special needs set up an account, a bank account at Chase and got it opened. While they're going through this whole process, um, the person that was just helping them is permanently banned from ever opening up an account at Chase, but they weren't even trying to open one. And, uh, and they received a letter for it and they just said that it looked like um, the circumstances of, of her setting up the account that she set up didn't look right to them and that they would Ooh. prefer to not do business with her. It's so strange that they can do these things. It is strange. Uh, Neolog is asking, what percentage of cash would you say should be in gold? So of all your cash that you have. Um, they, used, they used to say about 5 to 20%, but that was before we saw something as bad as what we saw in 2008 when uh, when banks were literally failing and we uh, were, were in the, the big financial mess with the real estate meltdown. Yeah. So for me, I, I would say about 20%. I think that's oh. good. That is, yeah, I, I agree with that about 20%. That's safe and that's solid and, and, and that's a good amount to go with. Last question here from Brenda Kale. She says, what about owning silver bars? So owning any silver at all is, yeah. is better than not, but the silver bars are the reportable assets. Uh, so back um, during the financial crisis, they came out with something called the Dodd-Frank Act. Yes, and the Dodd -Frank, Dodd Frank Act. Uh -huh. It's so broad, everything that it covers. But one of the things that's, it, things that's in there is that um, it tracks gold and silver uh, bullion sales. So bullion, by definition, is any coin, um, any round um, coin or bar that says how much gold or silver is in it. I can show right. I can show them an example yeah. if you want, Andrew, so they sure. see the difference here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is this one. I think this is one right here that I have. But you see it's shinier. Yeah. So that's a silver eagle that yes. I think. Yes. So that's uh -huh. a, a one ounce, um, similar to a one ounce silver round, but it's yeah. a government coin. That's okay. a reportable Very asset. Nice. It's, a, it's a beautiful coin. In fact, yeah. if you look at the lady that's on the front of this, of the one yes. ounce silver round yes. and you compare it to the lady. It says Liberty. Yes. That's Lady Liberty. And if you look okay. at the gold coin, it's the same lady. So, it is the same on this gold coin. I can confirm because yeah. I just looked at both of them. It is the same. Yeah. And the gold coin is the most popular gold coin, the most beautiful coin that the United States has ever made. And that's why they chose it for the Silver Eagle. Yeah. But it's, um, they're both good. It's just um, I would stay away from the non-report or, or from the reportable silver, like the bars and the bullion, if you can. Of course, um, sometimes when you get the coins like the Ben Franklin half dollar, and let's say you have a whole bag of them. You put your hand in there and then you look at your hand. Your hand's dirty. They're not as beautiful. <laughs> but the Silver Eagle is very beautiful. And it's uh, you touch it, it doesn't make your hand dirty. Yeah. So sometimes people pick them because of, of that, because um, it's more beautiful. But that shouldn't really weigh into it at all. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I agree. And, you know, there is, I mean, there is a difference in them. But ultimately the 90% silver coins have much less paperwork and much less of a paper trail in reporting them than it, you know, it's all a question of how much do you want the government to know about what you have? Right. I think so. It's yeah. like, that's one of the questions you have to ask yourself. Exactly. And um, so for me, I want to own things that are outside of the central A's banking system while I can, because that window's closing. So at yes. some point, you'll have no choice. But right now you do. Exactly. Well, Andrew, we're almost at 50 minutes here. So we have gone we have gone quite a bit, but I'm glad because we got to answer a lot of questions and talk about a lot of key things that are happening right now that are influencing the market. So thank you, Andrew, for joining us. Well, thanks for having me. I hope to be back soon. But I think the timing of, of, of this get together was very important because it was. Um, there's, a, there's a lot happening today, but definitely reach out, say that uh, Amanda sent you um, Ark of Grace, anything in there, but our response time is quick and yeah. uh, we'll be able to answer all your questions and um, we're not going to pressure you. Wonderful. And Andrew will be back on in a couple of weeks. So you'll see him again real soon here. And once again, you could go to bh-pm.com and fill out the form and uh, a member of Andrew's team will call you. Absolutely. Thank you, Andrew. God bless. Thanks for having me. 
And that concludes our time with Andrew Sorcini. I hope you learned something. That's why we do these two also. You know, I hope you learn things from this. I certainly do when I talk to Andrew. I'm always picking up tidbits and, and kind of making it in the in the Rolodex that is my brain, making mental notes about it. So, uh, no, again, tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It is Super Tuesday. Uh, there, it, we are going live. And the Eclipse Part 3, we're going to be talking about, about some urgent things that are happening with this that are influencing the nation. It is incredible how all of these things tie together. But we will be doing that tomorrow on Super Tuesday. We are going to tie in also the Supreme Court, what has happened at the Supreme Court, what's coming up at the end of April in the Supreme Court um, which I think is going to be very prophetic, the timing of that. So it's going to be 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow. We are most definitely going live. We also got two new residents at the sanctuary today. We will be showing tomorrow. We actually had two bunnies come in. One of them is in, is uh, very much disabled uh, and they are sisters. So um, Vince went out to New Jersey to get them. Uh, and bring them to us. And we will be sending it over to our social media team, what I took today, and we will be debuting them tomorrow. So thank you everyone for joining us. God bless you. Keep the faith. Armor up according to Ephesians chapter six, Psalm 91. I encourage you to say it every single day. I say it every single day. Uh, also Ephesians chapter one and three, those scriptures from the believer's authority, I say every single day, uh, as well as the Lord's prayer. The word, the word is living and active. We have to activate it. We have to speak it forth out of our mouths and get into the habit, the regular habit of doing that because it is transforming. It is transforming. It is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And I encourage you to do that. So have a wonderful rest of your evening, everybody, and we will see you tomorrow night. Hello, everyone. Amanda Grace here. So as many of you know, Dr. Mark Sherwood and Dr. Michelle Sherwood of the Functional Medical Institute are mine and Chris's doctors. And so I went to Dr. Sherwood with a problem that I was seeing, not only with, with what I was going through, but with what other women were going through concerning their metabolism, concerning energy, concerning their hormones. And so we put our heads together and we are very happy now to finally be able to present to you Rafa for women. Rafa means healer in Hebrew. So it is an ode to the Lord because he is our healer. He put things in the earth that help heal us. And so Rafa is a product that was created for that. It also helps by helping with a healthy metabolism and natural hormones, as well as it helps balance fatigue. It helps with weight gain, night sweats, mood swings, blood sugar issues, and more. It is all natural. And I find more and more people are going into the natural arena in order to find solutions to issues that they're going through. So if you'd like to learn more, you can go to www.arcofgrace.org forward slash ministry dash partners to learn more about Rafa today. God bless. Hey everyone, Amanda Grace here. If you are looking for advice on financial matters, if you think gold and silver might be right for you, go to bh-pm.com today. Andrew Sorcini of Beverly Hills Precious Metals, who has been on Ark of Grace many times and loves to answer our viewer questions, is here with his team to answer all of your gold and silver needs. Whether you want to buy gold and silver, whether you have questions to see if it's right for you, whether you are looking to roll over retirement accounts. Go to bh-pm.com today and Andrew and his team will be more than happy to assist you with all of your needs. If you want to support an amazing patriot and be a blessing, go to MyPillow.com today and use promo code ARK, A-R-K, to save up to 66% or more off of all MyPillow products. They have pillows, of course, but they are so much more than pillows. They have sheets. They have slippers. They have bathrobes. They even have 
dog beds. And a fun fact for all of you, Noble, one of our pigs in our animal sanctuary has indeed slept on a MyPillow dog bed. So if you want to be a blessing, you can go to MyPillow.com today and use promo code ARC. It is an alternative to big pharma based on quantum physics, over 40 scripture verses written into these patches for everything from blood sugar, anxiety, pain, neuropathy, to immune system boost, dog pain. They are very sincere about um, having alternatives to big pharma. We are a big advocate of natural solutions to help with pain and, and, and blood sugar and a host of other issues. I yeah. tried the pain patches and, yeah. and they worked when I used them. When you connect it to your body, the skin patch changes changes your brain waves. Sugar, this one is neuropathy. I actually have it on. And we use this on Toby, actually, because Toby's about eight years old. And from being paralyzed years ago and the Lord miraculously healing him, he has a little leftover with his joints and his hips. So we actually give him the doggy pain patches. What was he doing? He was running? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I walked him out. And wow, he's boom. And he got power. I said, no way. And I don't know. I said, Amanda, what? What did you do to him? To <laughs> <laughs> so it's good.